A new report out of China claims that Tesla has finally solved the dry cathode manufacturing process and is now working to mass produce them. Stick around as I discuss the exciting new details shared in this report. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watch. Many so-called battery breakthroughs have come and gone without actually becoming a reality. However, I'm thankful that Tesla's dry electrode manufacturing process seems to be a breakthrough that is becoming a reality. Yes, Tesla is already able to produce their anodes with their dry manufacturing process, but as we've talked about, they've had issues with the cathode side. Thankfully though, a new report does indicate that Tesla is confident that they finally have a design and process that will allow them to mass produce their cathodes with a dry process. Now, if I step back just a minute, remember that Elon Musk has been losing patience with the 4680 battery team. And in addition to the recent layoffs and the leadership shakeup, an ultimatum was set that if the team wasn't able to lower the cost to produce their 4680 batteries below that of their suppliers, Tesla might cancel the 4680 program altogether. Well, this kind of pressure is apparently yielding results with the team. And obviously they had a change in leadership, but nonetheless, this late post report indicates that Tesla has finally solved one of the key technologies that should allow Tesla batteries to cost significantly less to produce. And that is the dry cathode manufacturing process. In this late post article, it's written, quote, we have exclusively learned that Tesla plans to mass produce and install 4680 batteries that completely use dry electrodes before the end of the year. This will be the complete version of the 4680 battery. So the article mentions that this will be the complete battery because this is really the main technology that Tesla has still not been able to implement into that battery based on what they discussed at battery day. Now, of course, we hope that Tesla implements more silicon into the anode of the battery. It looks like they already are implementing a little bit of silicon based on a couple recent teardowns. But nonetheless, this dry cathode was one of the big pieces of the puzzle that was missing. Now, once again, going back to the ultimatum, if the Tesla team is not able to reduce the price of their batteries, Tesla might abandon the program altogether. That's a big ultimatum because, for example, other battery companies like LG Energy Solution, They've been making batteries for a number of years and they have established supply chains. But since Tesla's process with their dry uh, manufacturing process on the um, cathode and the anode side, since that is so much more efficient than the other traditional wet processes, and since they'll be doing this in-house, it should actually give them an edge in price when it comes to full-scale manufacturing, as long as they're able to be very efficient with their manufacturing and not have a lot of waste. But in this article, it's written, quote, if Tesla can really achieve a self-production cost lower than LG, this will be the cheapest battery produced in the United States. That's pretty significant, the cheapest battery produced in the United States. Now, specifically, it does mention their United States. We're not talking about China. CATL's LFP batteries are going to be less expensive to produce than Tesla's batteries here in the States. But nonetheless, for Tesla, this early on, once again, Tesla's battery program was officially uh, made public back in 2019. So we're not talking about a long time ago. Um, Tesla is already making great progress. And although we wish they would be faster with their progress, they've really done a lot in a short period of time. But nonetheless, uh, they're going to be, if they get this working at scale, they could very well be the lowest cost battery manufactured in the United States. Now I'm gonna move on with more details from that article, but I just wanna address something that I talked about in the past. Of course, the Monroe team is in the process of tearing down a Cybertruck and analyzing that. And during that, they of course tore down the battery pack and they are analyzing the 4680 cyber cells from that pack. Based on a previous video, a Monroe Live YouTube video and one that I discussed in my previous video, um, Tom and Sandy, they appeared confident that they would find the cathode of that battery to be produced with a dry process. I, of course, expressed a lot of doubt that that would be the case based on previous reports that I've read, news stories, things like that. The, the fact that that battery would have a dry process cathode didn't fit into the narratives and the information that I have. So if this report from Late Post is correct, that really corroborates my doubts that indeed 
that cyber cell most likely, I can't say for sure because obviously I don't have all the information there, but most likely that cyber cell, the cyber cells in the cyber truck don't have a dry process cathode. It wouldn't make sense that they do if something like this late post report is accurate, that Tesla is just now beginning to solve that process and they're starting to work that into um, a mass scale production. Tesla apparently is still purchasing cathode, um, cathode rolls from companies like LG, putting those in their batteries, their cyber cells, but as this late post article is talking about, as it's discussing, um, they have apparently solved this process as we're going to discuss, but it's going to take a little bit of time for them to really implement that and scale that up. Now, one of the big reasons why solving this process on the cathode side is so significant is because the cathode of the battery is more expensive than the anode side. So when you're talking about an anode, one of the main ingredients in that as far as the active material is, is a carbon-based, usually graphite or something similar to that. So a carbon-based material. Graphite's not very expensive. Of course, you have to do some additives to that, PTFE and some other things um, that go in that. But that's not a very expensive material. But when you move to the cathode side and you talk about a high nickel content, you talk about adding lithium into that and uh, manganese, cobalt, whatever else you add into that, that cathode side, that's a lot more expensive. Those are a lot more expensive materials. So being able to do that in-house is going to be big and key for the cost of batteries. So Tesla being able to solve this is going to be a big key in them getting the cost down for their batteries lower than suppliers and to be able to be very cost competitive internally with these batteries. Now this late post article does once again reiterate that Tesla is currently purchasing the uh, cathodes from LG, it mentions LG specifically here, and then also two other Chinese battery companies. And then it specifically enumerates how important this is because the cathode is a large part of the battery cost. And specifically it mentions here, quote, the positive electrode material is also the component with the highest cost share in the battery, exceeding 35%. With that being said, let's move into more details about this. In this article, it's written, quote, we learned that the design of the dry process positive electrode 4680 battery has been finalized recently, which is the first step before large scale mass production. Tesla's battery department will then make every effort to improve production yield and efficiency and expand production capacity. So this is really huge news once again that Tesla has settled on a design and a process that they believe is scalable. Of course, there are always going to be little issues that pop up when it comes to full-scale manufacturing, but it appears like they have a process that's scalable here. Now, this is something that I believe holds more weight now since Tesla is um, several years into this process. Once again, this was announced publicly, the, their battery program back in 2019, and obviously they were working on it previous to that. So let's just say it's been five or so years um, that they've been working on their battery program. So. Five years ago, they didn't know what they didn't know, but now they know a lot more. So if the Tesla team is confident that they have a process now that is scalable, um, that makes me feel good. In addition, they purchased this technology from Maxwell, which had been working on the technology previous to that. So they have many years of experience, not only their own, but also um, the technology that they purchased. So now that they're confident in this, that gives me a lot of confidence as well. Now, once again, this article does clarify that Although it appears like Tesla has solved the dry process uh, manufacturing for the cathode side, that doesn't guarantee they'll be able to meet their cost goals because obviously there may be something that pops up that they don't know about. But nonetheless, in this article, it's written, quote, recent progress in dry process positive electrodes has given the battery sector the possibility of achieving its year end targets. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of details as to what Tesla changed to make this cathode process work now. But in this article, it was written, quote, after Baglino left, Tesla's battery team decided to take a route that would be slightly more expensive, but could lead to faster mass production. Then this article mentions one of the specific holdups to the process where it's written, quote, an engineer who once worked in Tesla's battery department said that Tesla only has a small number of customized and calibrated dry process positive electrode rolling equipment. Every time this equipment breaks down, it takes at least 45 days to repair, which wastes a lot of time for the battery team. As a reminder, the cathode materials are harder than the graphite materials used in the anode. And so during the calendaring process, apparently that was breaking these machines. And if it takes 45 days to repair these machines, obviously that's a big holdup. So it looks like Tesla may have switched to some different machines there. And in this article, it's written also, quote, 
there was a discussion within the battery department to leave some of the engineering difficulties encountered with dry electrodes to be solved in the processes after rolling and winding because there is less room for modification and optimization of the rolling equipment. Recently, Tesla's battery department began to try this previously rejected plan using another set of equipment to solve the problem of electrode coil yield after rolling and winding and made progress. So hopefully more details come out specifically as to what kind of defects were coming out of that calendaring process. But uh, nonetheless, it looks like Tesla has decided to switch to some different machinery here, maybe less specialized, more off the shelf. This article did mention that Tesla is using uh, machines from Japan. Um, so maybe this allows them to be able to fix the machines much quicker if there are issues. And they've just moved, whatever issues were popping up, they're able to solve them apparently later on in the process. So nonetheless, I'm guessing that Tesla didn't really have to change the cathode materials themselves much, but really just the machines in which they manufacture these. So this is interesting news, and I'm glad that Tesla is making good progress here. This article goes on. A person close to Tesla said the reason why the battery department has recently gained confidence is they believe that they have passed the most difficult stage of research and development, and the next step will mainly be engineering optimization issues. So once again, if this report is true, it looks like the pressure that Elon Musk has been putting on the team is starting to pay off here and Tesla with that ultimatum that they need to solve this by the end of the year. It appears like the team is going to be able to do that. Obviously nothing's guaranteed here, but this is an encouraging report. Now, I do wanna make sure that we don't underestimate the difficulty of scaling the process. Even if Tesla is confident that they have a process that is scalable, there still are going to be issues. But nonetheless, Tesla is once again somewhere like five years plus into the development of these batteries plus the additional expertise that they purchased from Maxwell Technologies. Um, so there is a lot of years of work that has gone into this process. So since the team is confident they finally figured this out, that gives me a lot of confidence. So by the end of this year, we should actually have cyber cells in the cyber truck with dry electrodes, both the cathode and the anode side. And that will mean that Tesla at scale will be able to produce these batteries at a really low price compared to other manufacturers, which will give them a benefit not only in the ability to sell vehicles at a lower price, but also make more profit. And it will be a big key into making the Tesla Cybertruck a profitable vehicle to manufacture. And Tesla's future vehicles that will likely use 4680 batteries, their next gen vehicles, not their robo taxi, but like for example, we expect some kind of van from Tesla that likely will use 4680 batteries that would make sense in the future. But nonetheless, this is encouraging news. I would love to know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Do let me know down below what you think about all this. And does this report give you confidence that Tesla has indeed solved this process? And do you think that Tesla will be able to actually mass manufacture these batteries by the end of the year with that dry cathode process? Let me know down in the comment section below. I would like to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.